several demonstrations in Panama and underway in the midst of negotiations with the national government. In the United States, at least four people were killed in a shooting at a shopping mall in the city of Greenwood in the state of Indiana. In Sudan, artisanal gold mining leave a trend of environmental destruction. We have more on the topic in this news brief. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. Several demonstrations in Panama are underway in the midst of negotiations with the national government. Leaders of the conglomerate Alianza Pueblo Unido por la Vida state that the pressure and measure demands from the government, the sitting up of a single dialogue table with all the actors who are still in the streets demanding social justice. In the midst of these demands, several roads in the capital region were closed as part of the protest, which according to some spokespersons will continue. In the last day, the executive and national alliances for the right of the organizer people, Anadepo, had agreed to lower the prices of gallon of fuel to $3.25, an agreement that had been rejected by the organization. In 68 years of life, I am tired of seeing governments that make their promises, that go up, still, go down. The next one goes up, they still, and he will lack everything, medicine, education, food, and our inequality has no name. The rise in the price of medicines, the basic food basket, which is very high, our economic situation, we have problems with large payrolls. On deafness, several factors for the perfect storm that is happening in Panama. People are fed up and have taken to the streets to demonstrate for things to change. On the last day, the Convergencia Sindical organization demanded that the government set up a single dialogue table. Government, which we hold responsible for the different confusions that have been generated as a result of this situation, to set up a single table with all the forces that have been struggling during this week. The Pueblo Unido Alliance has specified its proposals in seven priority points that have to do with the fuel hike, medications, the high cost of living, the general increase in salaries, 6% for education, and also the cancellation of some dialogues that do not contemplate the participation of the actors in struggle, and finally with a follow-up table for all the issues that remain to be resolved. In Honduras, the National Congress met to ratify the procedure for electing members of the Supreme Court of Justice. Members of Congress have tried to reach a consensus to elect judges in the proper manner. The legislative branch of Honduran government has been criticized for irregularities in previous processes where the non competent people were elected to comply positions in the Supreme Court. There were also evidence of corruption, impunity, and lack of access to justice. Historically, judges have been appointed for political reasons. Therefore, Congress aims at performing an open process on the basis of prescribing criteria based on merit and integrity. Cuban creditivity stand up to blockade union of railroad workers linked with national industry and other management models manufactured ferro buses or train buses for the transport of goods and passengers. The equipment is designed to transport passengers and cargo to and from remote rural areas. Through the work of the Cuban innovators, Dana Yutana and other out-of-service buses are transforming into railroad vehicles. The program currently under development is achieving a high social impact according to authorities in charge and efforts of quality service to the inhabitants of those communities far away from the municipal capitals. At these places, rival is the main means of transport. Human rights organizations in Haiti denounced that clashes between armed guns have brought the death toll to 300 victims. 
Pierre Esperance is Deputy Executive Director of the National Human Rights Network, emphasized that during this weekend, clashes between camps for territorial control of the city of Solela neighborhood located in the capital intensified and leaving at least 160 people injured, most of them civilians. The official stressed that figures presented an increase of 327 percent regarding deaths and 216 regarding injured people compared to last Wednesday report when the organization reported 89 killed and 74 injured. Casualties also rose after the United Nations unanimously adopted a resolution last Friday to ban transfer of arms to criminal groups in Haiti. In Colombia, the death of one person is reported while 13 others were injured in a motor bike bomb attack at the Department of Cauca. The attack, attributed in principle to Ford, uh, this then uh, took place in Sunday at about 11.30 p.m. local time in the municipality of El Bordo, head of the municipality of Patia, Cauca. The detonation affected at least six houses and several commercial establishments close to the town and center of this municipality in the Department of Cauca. According to preliminary information, the victim was a civilian, while among the wounded uh, there were three police officers. In the meantime, this Monday, an extraordinary security council will be held to analyze this and other attacks of violence. Truckers in Peru resume a strike after failing to reach agreement with the government seeking, seek measures to reduce the impact of rising fuel prices and other demands. Unions confirm that strike will be permanent and on a national level. One of the unions announced that although they will not take it to the streets to block the roads, they will comply with the general strike. Meanwhile, other sectors confirm that they will carry out blockades, preventing any vehicle to from circulating. Truckers from Arequipa, Lambayeque, and Cusco also confirm their participation in the strike. In Argentina, the provincial police of Jujuy, a jurisdiction government by the same person who holds Milagro Salas as a political prisoner, infiltrated social organizations without a court order. The SPNH gathered a dossier of almost 80 files with photos. On March 31st, the Public Prosecutor's Office ordered an investigation into the social leaders who were organizing a march on opposition to Governor Gerardo Morales. The prosecutor, the prosecutor ordered to infiltrate all the organizations that will mobilize and independence slide their leaders, which resulted in 16 raids on houses, dinner rooms, picnic areas, and headquarters of social movements. The defenders of the people tar targeted by the rights so were only able to see the file last Friday, the funny personal files of almost 80 leaders with all kinds of personal data, bank accounts, real estate, and vehicle registration information. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. In the U.S., at least four people were killed in a shooting at a shopping mall in the city of Greenwood in the state of Indiana. James Eason, chief of the police department, said that a man armed with a rifle entered the full court of the establishment and opened fire. He added that there are the four confirmed dead and two people with injuries who were taken to the hospital. He also confirmed that the assault is among the dead shot by an armed civilian who witnessed the shooting. Russian President Vladimir Putin said it is impossible to cut his nation off from the rest of the world and that sanctions imposed by the Western countries will not turn the, the clock back on the country's development. Since the beginning of the special military operation in Ukraine on February 24th, Russia has been hit by several packages of Western sanctions. Designed to insulate it from the global economy that has the private needs for access to goods, including commercial electronic, 
conductors and aircraft parts as a meeting of the Council for Strategic Development and National Projects. The head of state referring that Russia will, will either give up nor recede in its development. The European Union warns that it will not leave sanctions on Russia following the special military operation in Ukraine if Moscow and Kiev sign a peace treaty on Russian terms. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that he knew from the beginning that data will have to sustain sanctions against Russia for a long time and stressed that there is no other way to an agreement with Ukraine that, that the one that Ukraine can accept. Skoll emphasized that Europe will continue to support Kiev in economic, humanitarian, financial and armed shipments and guarantee that NATO will not become one of the sites in the war. The European Commission announced on Monday the purchase of 44,530 Additional doses of monkeypox vaccine concerning about a nearly 50% increase in cases in the European Union in a week. The European executive said at press release that uh, with this uh, new purchase, the numbers of doses acquired from the block from the Danish laboratory Bavaria Nordic amounted to 163. 1,620, according to figures from the European Center of Disease Prevention and Control, Europe is the most affected region in the world by monkeypox with more than 7,000 confirmed cases as of July 14. Known in humans since 1917, this disease is considered much less dangerous and contagious than smallpox, which was eradicated in 1980. It manifests with flu-like symptoms and skin rashes, and it usually clears up in its own after two to three weeks. Hurricane still hit southern and western Mexico, casting intense rains that could cool generate landslide and floods in the state in near Sinaloa. The National Meteorological Service reported that the storm was located approximately 500 kilometers southwest of Acapulco, Guerrero, and 600 kilometers southeast of Manzanillo, Colima. The Meteorological Service has a maritime navigation to take extreme precautions due to conditions of strong winds and high waves. In addition, it forecasted winds with guns of 70 to 80 kilometers per hour and waves up to 4 meters high off the coast of Colima, Guerrero, and Michoacán. Friends sent more water bombing plants and 100 more firefighters to combat spreading wildfires that were being fed by the hot winds from a heat wave hitting much of Europe. Two huge blasts were burning their way through pine forests for six days just south of the city of Bro in southwestern France. The fire have forced the evacuation of some 14,000 people, including many who were on holiday in the area. The devastation of forest fires are triggered by the summer heat wave in Europe. Parts of the continent are present enough for the new temperatures recorded nearly next week. The fire season was hit off after the unusual dried hot spreading that, that left the soil dried out and which authorities is attributed to the climate change. The Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute on Monday announced a yellow alert for tropical heat and temperatures close to 38 degrees Celsius in the south of the country. The meteorological authorities have activated the National Heat Plan and issue a series of recommendations to avoid physical exertion, which include drinking plenty of water, keeping a home school, and looking after animals during the, the tropical wave that will pass through the Netherlands with unusual values. The Institute also urged people to pay attention to the homeless or overweight people, children playing in yards, and the elderly. 
spoke mana for Spitpool Airport in the capital Amsterdam said them temperatures on the airport's runway could exceed 50 degrees centigrade and measures will be taken to alleviate passengers' discomfort and safety. And we have more news coming up after this final short break, so don't go away. Welcome back. We focus our attention to Sudan, where a growing number of the traditional miners have traveled to Banat village, hoping to try to reach it, but they live behind has floors of water powdered the ways loaded with toxic chemicals, including mercury, using the gold extraction process. Artisanal gold mining is widespread across much of Sudan, employing more than two million people and producing about 80 percent of gold extracted nationwide, according to experts. The North African nation is one of the world's poorest countries and mining remains a source of fast profit attractive mining. But chemical contamination from extraction gold extradition poses clear health danger. The World Health Organization stated that mercury damage the nervous system, digestive and immune system and can be fatal. It also threatens the development of children in the warm and early life. This original mining has a very big impact on the soil and it's used in many places, especially in agricultural areas, forests and even in the desert. There is now a lot of destruction, huge physical destruction within the lands. We got very large deep pits and large quantities of mining waste. Unfortunately, it is very hard to deal with all these pits from an environmental point of view. The actual treatment is very difficult. Currently, there is a huge problem facing the residents of these places, and that's the presence of large quantities, thousands of tons of waste or mining residues among residential and agricultural areas. Sri Lanka's inter-president, Ronil, which merited renewal a state of emergency in the country ahead of parliamentary elections to appoint a new head of state. With Romanesti said that measures was based on the public emergency the country is going through, which he said made it necessary in the interest of the nation's security ordered and to maintain supplies and services essential to the lives of the community. Meanwhile, the Sri Lankan parliament is expected to meet on Tuesday, July 19th to nominate candidates for president of the nation. If there are more than one that will be submitted on the final vote of the 225 members of the legislature by sacred ballot on Wednesday, July 20th. In Pakistan, at least 20 people died and other 30 are missing after a boat carrying more than 100 people, all of them relieved from the same family that capsized while crossing the Indus River on Monday. The overload boat was hidden to a wedding ceremony between the villages of Makshard and Karona when it capsized is in this river in the district of Sarid Kabab, Punyan province, including the police and local authorities. Nearly 90 people were rescued by drivers while officers retrieved 90 bodies. So far, authorities estimated there are 30 missing people, but the exact number of passengers is unknown. Most of the deaths were women of the same clan because in Pakistan, women don't learn how to swim as it is considered inappropriate from them. On Monday, the South African government joined the world in celebrating International Nelson Mandela Day under the theme, Do what you can with what you have where you are. Since November 2009, the United Nations officially assigned July 19 as Nelson Mandela International Day or Mandela Day. Annually, the world celebrates the contribution of the former president of South Africa, who has reminded the leader in the anti apartheid Haiti movement, a civil rights advocate who dedicated his life to fighting for equality. And the last government focused on dismantling the legacy of white supremacy over black by fostering racial reconciliation. His vision of democratic South Africa includes citizens who were literally and empowered. 
The educational unliftment of the country youth was central to his vision, allowing the youth, the young leaders, to better their young lives as well as others. Tercer English continues to grow. Signal now reaches Europe, and you can order for your cable dealer or tune it yourself. These parameters that you see on the screen are in place since July the 1st, and a question for the changes will be implemented for the signal in the Middle East and Africa. Now, more than ever, the world connect to us, and our stories are being heard all around the globe. This news multi-platform will continue providing trust for content to oppose the money's media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. And with that story, we have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesonenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesonenglish, I'm from the South. I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.